Welcome to the Pro Cheerleading Podcast, hosted by Makiba and Brittany, two former NFL cheerleaders discussing hot topics in the pro cheerleading industry and revealing the truth behind the palms. Hey everyone, welcome to the Pro Cheerleading Podcast, a Dr. Doctor episode. Welcome back. This is Brittany. <laughs> this is Makiba. <laughs> People don't know who you are. Um, they might not. Maybe this is their first episode that they're going to, like, hit play on. Because it's so cool. You never know. Because what are we doing, Makiba? We are talking to a doctor. Who, who has the best name ever. Brittany Crake. And she is a former NBA dancer for the Portland Trailblazers. And she is amazing. We cannot wait to share all the wonderful information that she's trying to get out in the world that's kind of geared towards female athletes and dancers in particular. So you guys are in for a treat. Heck yeah. Do you want our, like, unsolicited... <laughs> Healthcare advice. What are we talking about for cheer chat? Just overall health and like wellness, maybe like while you were on the team, self care tactics, just basically how do we survive it? How do our yeah, bodies how did and we our survive it? Yeah, how did we mentally and physically survive? I was on the work episode when we posted about it. I was like, how did everybody balance it all? And somebody responded and said, like, I didn't get any sleep, basically. Yeah. And, and she dropped her schedule and it was insane. So Maybe we're just not doing a lot of self-care, and that's the whole point. Uh, what would you have done differently to take better care of yourself? See, I think I thrived on stress. I hate to say that because I know okay. it's not good for you long-term, like Dr. Crate is going to explain here pretty shortly, is that you know there's a lot of repercussions that can happen from not taking care of your body, not drinking enough water, not sleeping, not eating your veggies and fruits. Like It sounds so simple, but it's so true. But I yeah. totally fed off of the stress. We called it SGA, sea gal anxiety. Yes. That's Did you have a lot of that? Oh, hell yeah. It would be like a whirlwind. Come home from work. The kids knew what it was going down. I'd call them on the way. I'm like, what do you want to eat for dinner? Da, 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 da. Like, just frantic as all You would stop out. at home and then go to practice? Yeah. You're crazy. I work so close to home. So I would stop there. I'm like trying to get dressed and trying to do my makeup. And I'm like, hey, this, hey, that. Out the yeah, window. exactly. <laughs> Sometimes, yeah. yes, literally, uh, for the kids. So it was always a little bit nutso for me. Yeah. But and I, a lot of lack of sleep. And rush. Yeah, totally. Mm -hmm. But we had a gym membership, which is really awesome. It's actually with Gold's Gym, mm -hmm. and their gym is like bomb.com. And it was 24 hours. I yep. used to practice at really odd hours of the night. I know. I would leave at like 10, 11, and you're like, I'm going to stay. I'm like, you are? <laughs> Make sure weird. you get home. Yeah. Sometimes I just, I'm a night owl, man. But let's see, what would I have done differently, though? I mean, not to, like, sponsors, but I feel like we had a lot of good sponsors that could help with your health. Mm -hmm. You do? Yeah. We well, had, like, like the facials thing. and the floating. Oh, we had Urban right. Flow. We got facials. Like, I found my girl to do my facials at Jean Rez, and they were, like, bomb.com. Really? Okay. Yeah, super relaxing. So that was a nice perk. I didn't use it, hardly any of the perks. I know. That's we good, wanted though. you to like, go spray tan. <laughs> maybe that would have been something, like taking advantage, like you said, of the massages if they had it. I would say sports massages are probably a really good idea if we were to give advice on terms of, like, what to do to give your body a little bit of a some TLC. It would be massages. Yeah. I only got them when I was hurt. My right. hamstring was giving me hell. But, like, I think a good massage after... You know, maybe a crazy week of games and activities. Maybe it's a good idea. Yeah. Rest. But you don't get a chance rest. to rest. You can, you have to practice. I know. I was going to say, like, sit in the sauna. We're probably giving the worst advice. <laughs> and Dr. Craig is going to be like, what are they doing? They're ruining they the whole episode. episode. God dang it. But, yeah. I mean, one girl actually DM'd us and asked about how I mentally handled not making it back or making it to finals after hitting the finals mark the first year mm -hmm. I tried out. And I definitely told her to do, like, some positive thinking and, like, yoga and meditation if possible. I think that's really powerful. That's a good self-help thing. Right. Just mentally staying in tune with yourself and expectations for the week or the day or whatever. And just positive taking a moment. affirmations. Yes. I see people posting that even more, so it must be like a daily calendar or something. Yeah. But I think that is very, very key when it comes down to preparing mentally for auditions. Once you're on the team, I think it might just be an adrenaline rush, but you do second-guess yourself a lot. So I think continuing to feed yourself positive messages is probably a good thing to do. Yeah, totally. Because you do start, I mean, especially your rookie year, you don't know shit, and you're just like fumbling through. You maybe start doubting yourself. I remember almost quitting my rookie year because I was 
of little... seagulls? Mm-hmm. Really? Oh, yeah. I thought I was a little in over my head. I was stressed, and I just was like, none of this shit is clicking. Like, I wasn't even, like, having fun in the sense that we weren't performing for a while. You're practicing so much over the summer, and you haven't even had a game yet. And so I just wasn't feeling like it was coming together. So You're so right. Yeah. In terms of your whole season, half of it is... The summertime, training, Mm -hmm. doing appearances, training camp, like all that crazy stuff. So you're not even, kind of dancing at the games is a small part of it. Oh, for sure. Because we only have 10 home games, y'all. It's a lot of prep that goes into being ready for those games. But you're yeah, the summer is like us dancing in the IPF, the practice facility, no mirrors. You're just dancing your little ass off and not really knowing how you're looking and until it was watching film day. But yeah, I would say... Just taking some time to, like you said, stay grounded, believing in yourself, feeding yourself positive messages, and taking time for yourself to read, what's the word? Recharge. Recharge. And reflect. Because sometimes you can just say no. Like, maybe it's always, you know, like a get-together or something, but you haven't been home in, like, five nights in a row. Like, just say no, thank you. Like, I can't go. And I'm okay. smiling because I still don't know how to say no. <laughs> People are like, let's do this, let's do that, let's do this. I'm like, okay, okay, when I really know that I should be taking time for myself. Mm. But I think that's really key. That's a great tip. Yeah, because ultimately sometimes you need to just be lazy and not do shit for a yeah, minute. Yeah, but FOMO, fear of missing out. That's true. What about that? And you don't want to miss out on bonding because maybe if you are struggling your first year on the team, you mm-hmm. feel like... You honestly get strength from your teammates, and you probably feel like you want to fit in or find your group. That's and so true. saying no thanks is kind of like... Don't be that do person. Do that yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I pass. No, I'm just kidding. But no, you're right. It's, it's a lot. I would say buckle up and enjoy the ride, but I just think that you have to be mindful of how you're managing that stress and trying to manage it in a healthy way. Totally. Did you do any of these things that we're listing off during yeah. your five years? During my five years? <sighs> no, well, I would say the positive messaging to myself, yes. And then you just get better at juggling, I think. So exactly. I didn't feel the stress from juggling. You know, you get used to learning all the routines. You get used to the demands and expectations, so it becomes a little bit easier to juggle. And it's not so like juggling with the mask over your eyes and getting turned around 50 times and having to do it. You know, you just kind of get a rhythm going. But... I didn't sleep very well, but that was just me. I've gotten a little bit better after retiring, but I'm, I still suck. So, yeah, no. Akiva stays up all night, edits, <laughs> writes open letters, etc. Stays up all night getting ready for talk show. Thanks, everybody, for all the feedback, P.S., on my little chit-chat with Mike Bianchi from the Orlando Sentinel. Yeah, you did a great job. Seriously. Thank you. Team No Sleep. Talk about that. I just, I don't know. I just, my only goal was to not sound stupid at four in the morning in Seattle. And you didn't. You sounded great. Thanks. And we were both, I mean, we talked about this off air a lot, is he was actually really nice. It was almost like a different person than who wrote the article. I was ready to rip his ass a new one. Oh, like, me too. I was like, you go, Makiba. Like, <laughs> I don't even want to be part of this because I probably say, like, really messed up stuff. No, but I would think, I literally thought he was going to talk over me, that he was going to be obnoxious and, like, really argue the points that he made in his open, whatever, his little blog post. And I was ready to shut all that down. But I really think that it is good. I mean, luckily we have this platform, but, you know, when it comes down to educating and helping to inform the ignorant masses out there about what it is that we do, why these issues are important, what the arguments are, I think we just have to take them up on it. I was like, fuck it, let's go. Like, let's do it. And, you know, as long as you're respectful, then we can talk. But I think maybe not engaging like you know, with little stupid 12-year-olds that are behind a keyboard. But if it's an opportunity to get the message out there, I mean, that's kind of why we started the podcast. It's like all these topics that we brought up for our first season. It's really because they don't know any better. So I was happy to take him up on that invitation. Totally. Well, and it's really sad, too, because it's kind of like these teams changing, eliminating their teams is so normal now because what other team has done it? The Philadelphia Sixers, one of the ones that I predicted not it to is. just be, you know, patting myself on the back. I was hoping I was wrong, but unfortunately I'm not. And the only two that are left that haven't given up some audition dates are the Raptors. But shout out to the Raptors, Northside crew. They Yeah, congratulations. It's they so are awesome. champions. But yeah, the only other one we're waiting on is Milwaukee Bucks. And that was the other team you predicted mm-hmm. that maybe could be shifting. Yeah, we'll see, but let's hope not. Oh, boy. 
Let's hope not. But audition season is coming up in the NBA. Our girl Jasmine made it yes. on the Atlanta Hawks dancers. Congrats, I had Jasmine. Zero doubts. Oh, seriously. I mean, yeah. None. None. It looked like a fun audition, but a lot of work. So we know that you guys are definitely probably needing to exercise some self care as you prepare for these auditions too, because and the know, aftermath too, man. Because it's all systems go, especially for people who have moved. Goodness gracious, you're traveling to be somewhere, and you're probably needing to be there for like two weeks at least to get through the auditions process, and it's a lot of stress. And then you're trying to move, and a lot going on. So eat, hydrate, sleep. And on another positive note, though, Mm -hmm. the Golden State Warriors announced their audition dates, and they had an awesome little promo video with it. Yeah, talk about it. Well, you talk about it. You (laughs) found it. (laughs) I could not help but tweet to them because it was was just, it was like the perfect promo video illustrating how much more than just dancers we are. Like, they had, like, words of athleticism, power, role model, ambassador. ambassador. And just style and technique and so just all of the things that go into being an NBA dancer. And so I just was really pleased to see them highlight their women. One of the words was empowered and they had like the women dancing in like Bollywood style attire. So I just thought it was really a cool way to promote, yes, these are women that are doing the damn thing. And you want to be a part of this audition. Like I just thought it was really cool. I imagine their auditions are already crazy, but... It made me want to audition for them, just feeling like, wow, this is a team and an organization that really stands behind their people Mm -hmm. and just supports the dancers and lets people know there's more layers to them than just entertainment. Like, they totally help out the organization. Yeah, and that was the right approach, I think. Totally. So, kudos to them, and we'll keep you posted as these teams form. Mm -hmm. I mean, the NBA's got quite a bit going on. I don't know if we could do, like, an NBA you know, click type episode, but we'll try. We're just definitely going to keep an eye on it and see how these teams form with the men and... Dancing dads. Damn, fuck shit. Can't even imagine, but we'll (laughs) report on it. But let's just get you guys all queued up for this episode with Dr. Craig. Again, I think there's a lot of great information here. Lean on her advice versus ours, but... And also just share with us what you guys really learned from this episode. I think it starts a dialogue that's super important of how we can look out for each other and taking care of ourselves better and also helping each other. So any last words before we get into it? No. <laughs> it's a really good episode. I like, like it. She's just, and she's very professional too. And she totally debunked like everything we said in our let's get physical episode. <laughs> so that is just what we did. But was it correct? No, it was not. Yeah. And I love that she's not judgmental about it either. She lived the life. She understands she the totally demand. She gets it totally gets it but she just wants us to have some better information out there so here we go see you on the other side hello hi there <laughs> you're so oh, you're perfect oh thank you <laughs> how are you too good how are you good long day but finally at home so I'm happy about that <laughs> oh gosh, thank you for making time especially so late in the evening um, oh no big deal Happy to be here. Thanks for having me on. We're yeah. so excited. So we heard such amazing things about you from our, we act like we're still best friends with them now, but <laughs> the Rosebuds, we just are so thankful that you were open to talking to us. Oh, of course. They're great. I actually danced with them for a year too. So yes, they're near. Did well? mm-hmm, I did before I joined the Blazers. So. Oh, awesome. Yeah. Cool. And I love your name, by the way. <laughs> I, we're so lucky. Yeah. And it's fun and hard. <laughs> and everything. (laughs) Well, we could just jump right in. I know it's been a lot going on recently, and so I loved how you called it out earlier, the bullshit NBA shit. So true. Because that's exactly what we felt like we were stuck in the middle of, but just trying to deal with all that. It was like crazy, (laughs) and it's still crazy. I feel like this is just the beginning of changes to come, but I just love what you guys are doing and making sure that people are at the table, you know? How many years did you dance with the Blazers? I danced with the Blazers for a total of four years. Um, I took a little one-year break in between, kind of deal with some other commitments that I made outside within the profession, which was awesome. But yeah, I had to come back for one more rally year, which was great. (laughs) And did you dance under Michelle or? I did. Oh, cool. Yeah, Yeah, so great mentor. And I'm happy to call her a friend now too. She has a really great program. So one of the best. I mean, Yeah. yeah, we love Michelle. 
Seriously. There's something in the water down there. Are you originally from Portland? I am. I'm from Portland. I grew up here in a little suburb right outside of Portland. I actually did not think that I would be back here. (laughs) But, you know, the city's changing and I'm glad that I did come back and ended up finding naturopathic medicine that way. Came across the campus here in Portland and so stuck around for a while, figured why the heck not. Did you do that after your dance career in terms of building your practice and going to school? Talk us through how you ended up. Um, It was kind of a crazy process. So I actually was living overseas, decided to move back to Portland. Kind of a a low moment, a tough transition and spur of the moment just decided I'm going to audition to be an MBA dancer. And of course in Portland, because that's where I'm from and I love the Blazers. So I auditioned three times total um, before making the team. But it just so happened that that third year that I was auditioning was also the start of medical school. So I actually danced all throughout medical school and it was, okay, stop, stop, stop. It was crazy. That's <laughs> insane. Yeah. Wait. Honestly, looking back, I don't know how I pulled it off, but really thankful that I did. And it's given me a totally different perspective. I mean, this is a, you know, recovering lawyer speaking, but it, doing NBA especially, not even NFL in my mind, I'm trying to think, oh, doing NFL, less games, et cetera, but doing 41 home games yeah. in law school would have been like, are you crazy? Wow, that's so impressive. <laughs> I, my mind is blown. I might yeah, the jury's blown. still out on that one. So, <laughs> but honestly, um, I think it brought me a lot of sanity during medical school too. You know, I saw a lot of my classmates just crumbling in their seats because they were, you know, hanging out there studying all day. And it's like, okay, I could either work out, you know, an hour a day for my sanity, or I could like lump that all together and just like do big bunches of it. And I'm so glad it worked out. So. Yeah, definitely a great mental break dancing. For yeah. Sure. yeah. Stress reliever. But wow, that's a, that's a <laughs> lot. I'm stuck. We're going to the rest of the interview. Oh yeah. I can't even process. <laughs> yeah, so right. how many years of school, medical school? So it's technically a four-year program. Um, Just like conventional medical school, we go through many of the similar classes. So start out with all the pathology, physiology, all that kind of stuff. We learn about conventional diagnosis and treatment, but then naturopathic doctors learn some like more alternative approaches. So talking about nutrition and herbal medicine, we learn osteopathic manipulation. So I actually love physical medicine. So I do a lot of that. And so it's kind of like just a a group of different modalities. I call it the tool belt. It's not just pharmacologics that we can use, but we have like all these options that we can really individualize our treatments for our patients. So it's a four-year program. I decided to do it in five years between dancing in the NBA and then meeting my now husband. There's a lot going on. So it took a little extra time. (laughs) Gotta have me time in the middle of all of it. For sure. The self-care, the sanity breaks are really important. So when did Rosebuds come into this? Was this before Blazers, right? Yeah, it was the year before Blazers. So the second year that I auditioned for Blazers and didn't make it, I also re-auditioned for Rosebuds. And that's the year that I made it there. So kind of got my feet back under me, although on very slippery ice. And then, yeah, the next year it really prepared me well to join Blazers. So Awesome. Yeah, we've definitely been around both teams recently and obviously love them both. So that's super cool that you got to experience both of those worlds. Yeah, I love that we have kind of this Pacific Northwest love between all the teams. It just makes the community so much more supportive and so much more fun. Mm -hmm. And I love that it's just a pipeline, if you will, of dancers. And we saw so much talent with the Rosebuds that obviously it's like, yeah, they're going to dance for the NBA for the Blazers one day, of course. Yeah. The Blazers don't eliminate any dance teams. I'm sure they won't because Michelle's. I certainly hope not. I've not heard any rumors to that effect. They and their program is dates, so it's, yeah. it's they're locked I in. I think they're locked in. Yeah, I think so too. So how did you come about like focusing your practice on dancers? It actually randomly kind of came about, obviously I was dancing while in medical school and went through a lot of my own personal health struggles with that, you know, hormonal shifts, the way I was performing, the way I was recovering, the way I approached nutrition and like understood how that really fueled my performance. Um, So in my last year of medical school, I was kind of just 
playing around with the idea of how can I get this information out? Because I'm seeing all these patterns, not just in myself, but also in the people around me. And it's very clearly from doing the thing that we love, right? And being in this industry. Mm -hmm. And I didn't really see a source for that information. So it's more of a labor of love, I guess, <laughs> of just wanting to see my friends, to see my teammates, my former teammates feel a little bit more empowered about their health. Not just right now, but also well into the future. You know, that's something that I think a lot of female athletes don't understand is that our decisions to really perform at a high level, like they don't just affect us right now, how we're feeling right now, but setting us up for some different challenges later on. And we don't have the resources on these teams, unfortunately. Yeah, there's no health insurance. There's no team mm -mm. doctor. There's no team physical therapists. And we are part of these world-class organizations are right. that have all of that at their fingertips and I'm sure they could have spared a little extra energy our way if we're like pulling muscles <laughs> on the sidelines and yeah, stuff. But. And through full muscles for sure. Gosh. Did you see a lot of your teammates coming to you for advice, especially knowing you were going through medical school? Yeah, I mean, questions were certainly brought up along the way, but when you're in medical school, you have to be really cautious about what you share since, you know, you have a sense of liability at that point, but you don't have a, a license to practice under. So um, I had to be really careful about that, about giving advice. Certainly invited them like into the clinic where I was kind of shadowing and then acting as a student doctor. But it's really more so now that I have a little bit of a platform that I'm getting questions left and right. And quite frankly, last year was my last year dancing. And so I try to keep things pretty professional, so to speak, in that front. Um, but I'm hearing a lot more of it now that you know I'm licensed and I'm able to have those discussions. So that's awesome. Definitely mm -hmm. can relate. Everybody just wants to hit you with hypotheticals. And right. stuff. It's like, I'm not your lawyer. Uh, right. <laughs> but really interesting. I love hearing just your gifts and your experience and your background and how you applied it to what you love, because we were just talking about that. You can be doing something that's very connected to dance, um, yeah. just based on other passions and interests. And I just love hearing how it's come together for you and your practice to share that kind of information. Because like you said, there's a lack of it and we make terrible decisions based on lack of information. Yeah. yeah. And I mean, I'm so guilty of that too. So I'm not pointing fingers, but man, we make some bad decisions, but to greater society, we look like the picture perfect, you know, vision of health. And that's actually not always the case. And so opening up these discussions, I think is really important, not only like in our community, but also within these organizations of you know, maybe that little side comment wasn't actually very helpful to how this person is viewing themselves and viewing their health um, and their ability to show up in their job, you know? So, Ooh, say that again yeah, for the people in the back. I was going to say. <laughs> yeah. Because I think even, maybe even the directors are grappling with not having those resources and so mm -hmm. don't really know how to support their squad with certain health issues that come up during the season. Yeah, for sure. Something that needs to be addressed in one way. I think the more that we can count as being part of an organization, the less there's this need of like, how do we treat them or how do we, or ignoring us or whatever. But it's just, if we're really truly considered part of it, then we should have access to the very same things that the teams do. Yeah. And I would assume that when these programs started, the vision was really different as far as, you know, the, the cheerleaders and the dancers go, that this is really just something to add to the team, add to the atmosphere. But we're now at a point where for a lot of people, this is a profession, even if you can't, you know, pay for your life, it's, <laughs> you know, you have to hold another job at the same time. But what is required to be on these teams is beyond something that you can ask of anybody just off the street. I mean, there's lifelong training that can go into this for many teams. And there's some like big things that come up, you know, injuries and all of that. And that's when they act, right? When all of a sudden it's like, oh, workers comp, now we need to be paying attention rather than, you know, preventing that in the first place and really supporting people in their health. But it just makes me think of like these decisions as of late. I'm trying not to keep going back to misery row here with the <laughs> decisions, but you know, as they broaden their sense of an entertainment team and you're talking about little kids stunting, you're talking about pogo stick people that are doing these <laughs> crazy stunts and okay, well, what's your policy going to be around preventative care or just addressing yeah. injuries? Because when we get injured, it's a whole different story. There's no support whatsoever, but yeah, let's see how that goes. 
sorry, my tangent. My rant's over. <laughs> That's okay. I, I love your rants, by the way. I think they're awesome. And I think what there's like inside of all of us, we're all feeling it and you just put words to it. So it's great. But yeah, I mean, talk about doing something radical. Like let's have these organizations provide some great services to support people to be their best, healthiest selves while being of service to the organization. I think that could be a huge change. And, and I think radical. it's important too, to have another woman speaking to women on the team about their health. Cause I don't know if you listened to our let's get physical episode. I think we touched in that I think so. on, in that episode, but basically we did have someone talk to us about not even body image, but just, I don't even know what it was to be honest, but healthy habits, don't eat in your car. Like it was really weird. And I just felt like I wish somebody like you was available to speak with us just because you're a woman, you're a dancer, you really? know exactly what's going on and how to guide us more properly than a man. No, I think that's a fair statement. I mean, men and women metabolize nutrients totally differently. And that's not a conversation we have often. And I think the sports medicine world is really kind of led by male centric physiology rather than things that support women's health. And then especially when you're I'll be blunt about it, I guess. But when you're putting a bunch of women in really teeny tiny outfits and then have men talking about how to support their health, while there's still clearly overtones of, you know, you needing to look a certain way in order to be in this role, I think that can be really problematic. At that point, it doesn't typically come down to, you know, what's in your best interest. It's more of like, what is the expectation for you to wear that uniform which I have lots of opinions about, some of which probably they may or may not be popular. And you were wearing the uniform, so yeah. you, and you can say whatever you want to. So. <laughs> yeah, I think um, having a healthcare lens now is definitely shading things for me. As far as like, I really want people to leave these roles knowing that they put it all out there and have the best time of their lives, but to not have that detract from their lives later on. When I came back from overseas, I think I was 30 pounds heavier than I was at my audition weight. You know, I had to go through the rigmarole. I had to, the blood, sweat, and tears, right? In order to get to a place where I felt like I could comfortably audition in a way that like fit the uniform and made me worthy of being on a team. Whether that was true or not, that was my perception. And I think perception is just as important. Mm -hmm. And we've definitely heard and confirmed from the Blazers that she doesn't do any kind of strenuous or strict weigh-ins or expectations mm -hmm. on you guys and you all look fabulous. So I think just that ease of mind honestly helps your health in that. Yeah. Weigh-ins were far done by the time that I was on the team and I was really thankful for that. But I think just being in the community, being in the industry, there is still like this internal fight as far as like, I'm not wearing a whole lot in front of a bunch of people. And so I, I want to feel good about that. I don't necessarily want to have the camera catch me at the wrong angle. And whether that mindset is healthy or not, that's a whole different discussion. But I think even if there aren't weight restrictions, there are some stories that we tell ourselves and that we kind of tell each other through our actions that are part of being in this industry. So yeah, because you feel differently when your body's going through different, yeah. you could just be bloaty McBloaterton for a game <laughs> or just know your body and you know, when you're like not looking your best your and, best, and you'd be out there, you know, in a revealing outfit that mm -hmm. really doesn't give you an opportunity to feel more confident about it. You're just, it's on your mind. I think the entire yeah. thing, it's just inevitable. Mm -hmm. But I did want to add when I listened to that episode, I thought you guys did a really good job of being raw about it. And, you know, this is kind of what it's like for most of us. One thing that kind of popped into my mind is I know that there are weigh-ins that happen sort of on both sides of the aisle, so to speak. Like NFL players often have weights that they need to meet, but their weights are typically there to keep them safe and to make sure that their performance is spot on. And that's a very different intention than needing to fit a uniform or look a certain way, which again, being blunt, I think is kind of like this skinny white girl standard that doesn't really match up with a lot of people's DNA, you know? So I have a good here. I struggled with that. I didn't look like a lot of my teammates did. So I just think that questioning the intention of those weigh-ins is really important. Yeah, yeah, because there definitely can be people who are like skinny fat, where they might be like fit in the uniform, look amazing, you know, even have ribs showing or whatever. <laughs> going on, but are they healthy? 100% not. 
you know, that's not a healthy weight for you. We've talked before. It's Mm -hmm. just kind of like you look at photos year to year and you kind of like, oh my gosh, I've gained weight. And it's just totally a mind screw. Yeah, Yeah. for sure. A lot of that, you know, is also probably coming from the constant dieting, right? Like our metabolism changes as you lose body fat, as you restrict your calories, your metabolism changes because it's survival physiology. You know, your body's thinking, I'm not getting enough calories for the type of energy output that I'm engaging in. And therefore every calorie in, I've got to store it somewhere, right? Mm -hmm. Like this is very real biology. It's not just me putting in the time doing cardio or weightlifting or restricting my calories even more. You know, this is stuff that we can't necessarily control. Right. Yeah, it's science. (laughs) (laughs) And if you suck at science like me, I just love that we're talking to you because I just remember feeling like I was grasping at straws so bad. Yeah. Because this stuff is what I basically went to law school for because I'm not a science person. (laughs) And so my understanding of human body, other than just, you know, your talks with your doctor that are just not about you being a dancer or this is what I'm putting my body through week to week. And I wouldn't know where to begin, like WebMD or like, how do you even know how to make sense of what your body's experiencing at any given point? I feel like that's the majority of my job these days is like dealing with Dr. Google and all of the, you know, self diagnoses that people bring in. It's like, okay, let's step back. Let's talk through this. And all of those symptoms you listed off pertain to like 50 other different things too. So, you know, talking people off a ledge a little bit and Dr. Google is great. It's empowering for a lot of people. And so I, I do support that, but you know, I think especially when you're in this world, having a doctor who is, sports medicine literate, but also literate in the type of activity that you're doing. It's not just sports med because soccer players feel entirely different than dancers do. And somebody who throws the javelin for a track feels entirely different than dancers do. And so understanding the like unique energy needs of a dancer is really important. And not many people out there do that. So I think having a family physician is excellent. It's a great place to start. And you can do a lot of your testing that is relevant in sports medicine. But if you find yourself sort of grasping for straws, like you mentioned, it's probably something, you know, that goes a little bit beyond that. If you've already checked all the boxes with your family physician. What were you going to say? Oh, I'm just going to have her squash that you don't really get sick from cold weather. Because that's something you always say. You're going to get, you know, a cold. And I'm like, no, I'm not. It's fine. Is that (laughs) You know, I I actually don't know if I can quash that. (laughs) Thank you, Dr. Craig. No, just yeah. I think it depends. It really depends on your perspective. I mean, I'm around a lot of Chinese medical doctors as well, naturopathic doctors, doctors who are familiar with Ayurveda, and then of course there's the conventional, more Western understanding of the body. And shoot, you know, I think we need to be open to a lot of different explanations because. Science can only explain so much and we continue to study a whole lot more, but we see people getting sick around (laughs) the time that the weather changes and, you know, finding ways to stay warm enough is important too. Especially like us when we were half naked half the time when it was still cold out. I will never forget seeing a friend of ours in the tunnel before we were cheering a game where we really should not have been in our white uniform that had our chests exposed. And I am so old school, maybe superstitious, whatever, but you shivering like bone chilling shivering and knowing that she had to go out there and perform and dance and yes your body gets warm but you know when you're not clothed properly and in the elements I do think it does not help the situation but I'm I do have weird little superstitions I'm sure (laughs) none of them are really justified but uh, I just had to try at least (laughs) well I'm always warning people you're going to catch a cold up your butt that was that's my saying yeah (laughs) Well, you know, in little shorts like that, you never know. Right, so, exactly. Crawl right up there and find a home. <laughs> what are some of the biggest health issues, I guess, that you, I know there's probably the big ones in terms of eating disorders, but other types of things that might come to mind that if people were listening to their bodies and they can really think, oh, maybe something's wrong, or maybe I should look into that. Maybe not to freak people out and have them visiting Dr. Google, but just For something sure. that are unique to dancers. Yeah, I think probably most unique to dancers. I think of your period as sort of your fifth vital sign. So I think for a lot of women, our first imbalances kind of show up in our period. So are we regular? Are we bleeding the same amount every month? 
you know, is your period extra long or is it completely absent? Then again, birth control can come into that picture, depending on if you're um, utilizing contraception, it can alter that picture. But I really think that your period can be a powerful vital sign to, to make sure that like things are really stable. If you notice big changes in that, it might be worth looking into. Other things like energy, the way you recover from an injury. I'm trying to think of like the way that I hear things commonly phrased to like, I'm so tired all the time or like, I'm always bloated or yeah, like my ankle injury just won't heal. And it's already been like two or three months. What the heck? Things like that pop up. And to me, those kind of indicate um, a series of possible hormonal imbalances or vitamin and mineral deficiencies that I would probably look into. The other thing is that, especially in this industry, when you're in a place where you have to hold essentially another job to get by, is looking at stress, right? The constant zipping from place to place, the constant question of like how you're performing, that essentially pumps cortisol through our bodies. And so being in a state of constant stress can also really impact all of those things, your period, your digestion, um, and then also hormones coming from your thyroid or even your sexual or reproductive hormones. It can have a big effect on those. So then specific to female athletes, especially dancers who tend to have a leaner body mass and lower body fat in general, um, I start to question sort of the musculoskeletal system and what does our bone density look like? Um, and how is that setting us up for osteoporosis at an early age or long term? So, yeah, it's pretty complex when it comes to women. We're a little bit different. And when we get into physique sports, if you want to call it that, where you need a leaner body mass in order to perform or be a part of um, that sport, then there are some complications that come up. So you may not feel it now, but those are things that we're kind of setting ourselves up for. Mm -hmm. Totally. Do you have any advice for people? Obviously go see your doctor if you're seeing signs, but anything that you can recommend? So I'll tell you things that I commonly like to talk about because I can't give specific recommendations, but number one, eat real food, stay away from the processed crap. And it is crap. And I say that because, you know, it's pumped with a lot of chemicals, but not necessarily a lot of vitamins and minerals. And really active women need those minerals to replenish um, their muscular activity, to replenish their metabolism and give their cells what they need to produce more energy. So, you know, having lots of vegetables throughout the day, not in necessarily replacement of the other things, but I like to always talk about adding vegetables into your day. So adding to your diet rather than detracting from it. Adequate protein is super important in muscle turnover and repair, injury repair. Um, and energy production as well. So those are some really basic things regarding nutrition. I go back to what I kind of talk about as foundational health habits, and that would be get good sleep. There's a lot of research coming out right now in the sports medicine world that's looking at sleep and how that relates to performance. It's massive. So if your schedule is really limited, if you're not getting enough sleep, number one, you're going to wake up the next morning, you're going to feel like you know, so tired, like a lot hungrier in general throughout the day. And you're going to be craving more of the sugary things because that's what your adrenals are wanting. Stress is going to be up and you're not going to be able to perform at your greatest ability. So lots of sleep, hydrate appropriately. You can totally Dr. Google that. (laughs) There's lots of stuff about hydration out there and then stress management, you know, and those are the basics. You know, if we are running around Um, working multiple jobs, we need to take some time for ourselves and do the things that make us feel calm, make us feel good, help us slow down, do the self-care thing with your mask and your bath bomb, whatever makes you happy and do some self-care for your mental health. So that's super, super helpful. I think when I was listening to all that, and maybe it's just because it's you, but you know, you hear all that and you're like, yeah, 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 yeah. You know what I mean? Like, I don't have time for that. I got too much to do, no time for sleep. There's all kinds of things that based on the rigor of what we do where I could see it being easily dismissed if I maybe heard it when I was going through the thick of it. But yeah, um, but it's so important. And I think because of stepping away from it, I'm seeing like if I did have any of those any of those (laughs) things at the time, it probably would have helped you. Because Mm -hmm. you know, when you think of our schedules, we practice in the evenings from 
six thirty to Lord knows whenever you're done. Mm-hmm. I'm wired as heck by the time I get home from practice. I'm like a little vampire. I've gotten better, but you know, <laughs> sleep's just not necessarily coming to you. You got to wake up. If you have kids. You're just not getting a lot of those simple things that you mentioned. Back to the basics, really. Yeah. It's back to the basics. And that's what the science is showing now, which is so cool. Uh, I mean, that's like the foundation of naturopathic medicine, pretty much what we call basic treatment guidelines is all of those things. But the fact that science is now focusing on that, I just love it. But I think you're right, especially as majority young women who are in these roles. It's like, oh, yeah, I can totally go. I spent so many nights pulling all nighters for tests coming the next day. Yeah. And like in hindsight, I was like, Oh my gosh, what was I doing to my body? <laughs> like studying like, sleep patterns and how they affect people as you're up all night. Right. <laughs> yeah, for sure. I mean, as much as you can instituting those things is just giving you that much of a better chance as far as keeping your body healthy and really repairing. Cause we're, we're putting a lot of stress on our bodies, you know, tearing up our muscles, performing in a good way. You know, that happens with any kind of physical activity, but giving yourself that chance to really repair and detox the inflammation that we're building just by doing the sport we love. If you don't mind us digging a little deeper, you know, it's the truth behind the palms and I totally get the <laughs> line around um, advice, but I just think the reality of what we're up against when we're on a team, you know, in terms of like resting an injury, mm-hmm. you can't miss games. I don't know, mm-hmm. maybe it depends on the rules of the teams, but there's this pressure, I think, that you can't miss a game to rest a torn muscle or that rolled or just like when you are trying to maintain that image there's probably lots of myths that you have like oh I shouldn't drink water because I'll get bloated like I'm just thinking of the things that you can definitely fight yourself fight yourself on on each of the basic things that you need to be doing you make an excuse based Mm -hmm. on whatever you're dealing with which I could just hear what's going on in my head as to Mm -hmm. like all of this great practical advice but just like hey, it'd be nice to rest, but there's only 10 games in a football season and I'm cheering at every home game. I don't want to hear, you know, like the stuff. For sure. And I mean, I was totally there. I did my whole first year with the Blazers. I was really injured. I actually essentially tore my hamstring at auditions, made the team. Oh my gosh, it was the most brutal year. And, you know, from high kicking every other day, it never repaired until that off season before auditioning for my second year. Mm-hmm. You know, and it's just, for exactly what you said, you don't want to miss it, or you feel like there's the pressure that you can't miss it. Otherwise, you know, you're not going to be seen as valuable to the team. And are you going to be able to come back? There's a lot of pressure. And that's in sports in general, yeah. in general. But that's where, you know, if you are looking at performance medicine, um, getting in touch with somebody who's sports literate is super important. And how you can periodize your training. Um, and so that's, like periodicity around training. How do I train during the off season versus how do I train during the actual season or how do I eat during the off season to achieve my goals? And then how do I maintain that throughout the season to maintain my energy? There's a lot of really cool approaches you can take and how you maintain your health. Cause I think that's a part of the game. Like if I am injured during the off season, my rehab looks entirely different than how I'm going to rehab myself during the season so that I can stay afloat. You know, when you think about the off season, it's like you're one chance to kind of like decompress and yeah and you probably aren't thinking very strategically about how you can use that time to better prepare your body for what you're hoping you'll do with the next season Mm -hmm. and do all this like terrible behavior and then you make it that much harder for yourself as you approach auditions because you have to undo all of your like I'm in off-season mode and (laughs) totally but I think that's just really interesting the way you put it just kind of thinking strategically about how to get your body prepared so that it's more of a maintenance and your body's probably stronger from right that, from that regimen maybe that you do in the off season. <laughs> I mean, I mean, you have to rest, you have to have a little bit of fun too. So I don't think there's anything bad to be said about that, but you know, again, I, I went a little nuts after the season was over all the things that I really missed all my sweets, you know, we became fast friends all over again. Mm-hmm. Um, <laughs> but yeah, there are ways to approach it and you can have that time to rest and recuperate. And then there, you know, is, a time period where you get back to it and you kind of adapt prior to the season and then you can maintain and be that better version. Great advice. Does wine include minerals? (laughs) Resveratrol is an excellent (laughs) anti-inflammatory. Perfect. Okay. (laughs) Um, I will say that the components of wine look pretty promising, everything except for the alcohol. But, you know, if you are pretty healthy overall. A glass of wine or two isn't going to 
be an issue. Perfect. <laughs> I'm a big fan myself. So there you go. Perfect. Yeah. I know we didn't talk as much about your practice, but can you mm-hmm. kind of describe in a general way, holistic, because only certain things come to mind for me because I haven't been to like a natural path or whatever you technically call it, but <laughs> just what the suite of options are for people to consider. I mean, I tried yeah. acupuncture for the first time, mm-hmm. but it was just different options, but maybe people aren't really thinking of what that would look like. Is it getting a massage with aromatherapy? Like, I don't know, but can you break that yeah. down what it might consist of? Totally. So um, there are a bunch of different practitioners that tend to fall under that spectrum. So you have chiropractors technically fall under that spectrum, massage therapists, absolutely, acupuncturists. PT tends to be a little bit more mainstream, but you could certainly find people in that realm who practice a more holistic approach. Um, And then naturopathic doctors, of course. And that's more of like, here in Oregon, a naturopathic doctor can be your primary care provider. So you know, when you get the common cold, you come in, we'll see you for that. But then there's also a bunch of doctors who practice under a variety of different modalities or kind of those tools that I was mentioning earlier. So folks who really specialize in herbal medicine or um, nutrition-based medicine. I have a lot of friends who are doing physical medicine and sort of musculoskeletal health from a holistic perspective. And especially in women, like how is the pelvic bowl functioning as an example? I know that's really specific, but you have a wide variety and essentially it's most things that are non-pharmacologic fall under kind of that holistic health. But to me as a provider, what that means when I'm talking about holistic health, it's seeing people as a whole person. So say you have something going on in your heart, you know, maybe there's a little flutter there. I'm not just taking into account the heart as an organ. I'm looking at you know, your stress, your nutrition, other organs that may be contributing hormones that cause that, or, you know, some sort of nutrient deficiency or excess in another nutrient. So it's kind of looking at the whole person, looking at their lifestyle and their habits. And it's interesting that that's not what all doctors do, at least in their approach of hearing about one symptom and not thinking of all the other possibilities of what could be influencing that. But I mean, it's really helpful to hear you explain it because, you know, if I were to go to my doctor and say, who's not like a holistic doctor and say, Mm -hmm. hey, I'm interested in like talking to someone that can help me focus on this or giving you the terminology, if you will, to really be able to explore other options. So I appreciate you taking that down. Yeah, absolutely. And, you know, I think a lot of um, more of the conventional or Western docs go into it hoping to have that sort of effect, but there's a massive shift into specializing um, within that field. So, you know, one person is really learning about the, you know, the kidneys, somebody else is really learning about, you know, your cardiac health or your heart. So they're kind of specializing, um, whereas most NDs tend to stay a little bit broader and be kind of the expert generalist, if you will. So that's where I think the holism picture really kind of comes together. Cool. Well, you're probably cringing when you listen to Let's Get Physical episode. But <laughs> oh my God. Is there anything that we said that was really good, really bad, things we should never repeat again, like episode, <laughs> flag it, any advice? Um, no, I mean, I think we talked about it a little bit, just things that come up as far as like weigh-ins and what's the intention there. I mean, I think that was probably the most poignant thing that came up for me. I also think that kind of how we have these discussions can have like such a huge impact um, within our community and how we feel about like our self-worth and our readiness to perform and what we feel like our place on these teams could possibly be. Um, And I think a lot of that is socialized, I think, whether from the outside community or within the community, Um, but whether it's spoken or unspoken, there is this pressure to be thin and to fit into a mold. And I think people do some crazy things in order to to get there, right? And I still get it all the time, even though my platform is all about keep healthy, like be your best self, make sure that your, you know, your hormones are in check and that you're maintaining, you know, the nutrients that you need. I still get questions all the time, like, what do you think about the keto diet as an example? And my question is, what's, what's your intention? You know, like, is this all about losing weight for you? Or is this about your performance? Because they oftentimes, you know, if you have one, you're giving up some from the other. And I think our conversation needs to start reflecting that a little bit of what's the pros and cons of making the decisions we are around 
having a certain body habitus or physique. And it's interesting, like my mind keeps racing to while we were dancing and having had this conversation and like you said, kind of changing the nature of the conversation. Because, you know, you have your girls that are your support group that you just can vent to about how your body's feeling or totally. relate to what you're going through. But if if there's like even one person, whether it was a squad leader or somebody that you trust that's saying, hey, you know, I've got this really great information. I think we always shared what was working for us at the time, but yes. it, it was like terrible. Um, <laughs> But it would be nice, even if it was like, hey, we're all zipping from work for practice. I have some freaking celery sticks in my car. Come over and eat. Let's just chow down some veggies before we go up in here to practice. Something like that where you're just trying to help each other get the nutrients. Because when I think of what I stuff my mouth with uh, before practice, (laughs) my little snack bag, you know, not necessarily stuff that probably fueled me, but just it could take one person to try to share and spread the good information that could help yeah. help your squad. And that's, mm-hmm. I'm just loving this conversation because I think there's a lot of takeaways that yes, you can do get that voice out of your head saying, no, I cannot. Cause you can probably yeah. make your life a lot easier in terms of long-term effects, not to scare people. Like if you don't listen to Dr. Craig, this is what's going to happen. <laughs> but you mentioned osteoporosis earlier. Yeah. Are there other things that maybe you can just kind of give as a forward of like, this is why taking care of your body is so important because, you know, I think I talked about on Let's Get Physical, my own struggles because I was so worried about weight that I wasn't paying attention to any of the other things that probably screaming is wrong with my body that led to a surgery and everything else. So, because I think we're so focused on right now, especially when you're dancing, you're on this team, you want to keep this spot as long as you can, you want to dance as long as you can, but you do not think about your future. Is there, are there things that you can tell people that you might want to keep in mind X, Y, and Z? Yeah, I think that reproductive health is really important here. And not saying that everybody needs to have kids. Like, you do you. You do what you want. But it can be altered if you're um, long-term calorie restricting. I have a lot of people in my life who have been in this world and have a lot of difficulty getting pregnant. And usually it's due to kind of long-term hormonal imbalance from malnutrition. So I think fertility is a big player here um, for a lot of women and particularly those who are interested in having children in the future. Also thyroid health, which surprisingly is a regulator for a lot of other systems in your body. And usually how you'll feel this is related to energy initially. So kind of that chronic stress and chronic calorie restriction can actually lead to low thyroid function as well. So, and that's, you know, that's a medication that you may end up being on for life if you don't catch it in time. Yeah, no, that's super important. Thank you so much for this. Like, I just feel like it's it's so important and you're speaking like our language (laughs) of knowing like I mean, you're a dancer. I mean, it's just yeah. priceless to have that relatability factor. And without even giving advice, you've really just touched on so many things that people can look into further with their doctors, seek out other types of doctors or specialists, mm-hmm. if you will. And just finding a new way to listen to your body. Yeah, yeah, yeah exactly. That's kind of my goal. It, so I'm wanting to get this information online. Folks are welcome to follow along with me, but you kind of brought this up that like we would always share tips and tricks with each other at practice or at games, whatever, what was working for us. I did a super informal survey of um, dancers within the Pacific Northwest. And it was like 80% of dancers got their health information from a friend or from a blogger. And my first thought was like, oh my gosh, I've seen so many of these blogs and they're really scary. (laughs) You know, what are we doing? You know, we're we're so desperate for this information. And so I just want to be, you know, a a reliable, neutral source for people to get some good information that's pertinent to what it is that they're going through right now. And then also to keep them healthy in the long term. Right. Because you think about all these like Instagram famous you know, yeah. fitness models who are selling these like diet plans and all these crazy things to people online and they're not necessarily have any background in medicine or nutrition. And so totally agree that there's just a lot, a lot of bad information out there that people can access really easily. So it makes sure. your job a lot harder, yeah. but, but it's so true. People see we're in that, like, I see someone's body. I like that. I want to look like that. What does she do? You look at what little sponsor and it's like, try these vitamins and da, 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 or buy <laughs> this waist trainer and you'll be snatched. And <laughs> you're just so right. There's just a lot of surgery out there. Surgery. <laughs> <too>. <laughs> 
<laughs> and personal chefs and a lot of money that made their lives so much easier. Right. That would be awesome if we could all have that. <laughs> right. But we are definitely going to um, provide a link to your website for mm -hmm. our listeners and love that you're putting a lot of these resources online. I mean, it's you're located in Portland. I know people are probably listening all over, but I think it's just great to share that information and yeah. we're just super, super appreciative of you talking to us about it. Because when we heard about your chat with the Rosebuds, we were like, like we were so jealous. <laughs> so honestly. jealous, like, wow, like what would have been like life changing to have that kind of catered information to us, for us, especially because there was nothing to help us, nothing. Like, nothing. And that, the more I think about it, it just makes me kind of angry that they couldn't share that resource with us as dancers because mm -hmm. yeah. even if it wasn't tailored to us just like some more information and resources I would have settled for basics at that point <laughs> you know <laughs> and so that's I mean that's my goal is I just want to get some good information out there so you know whether you're here in Portland or across the country I, I hope that what I put out there can be helpful to you um, certainly you're welcome to reach out to me if you have any questions I cannot give individual advice if you're asking for it, just a warning to everyone, but I essentially want to put out all the information that I wish I would have had as an MBA dancer so that other dancers can really just stay healthy long-term and have the time of their lives. Cause that's what this is about doing what you love. Yeah. So in a healthy way, in a healthy way. Well, thank you so much. Yeah. We have beautiful inside and out. For I know. Sure. God. Oh, so sweet of you. Thank Air you. Hug. Air hug. Um, <laughs> you have a choice. We did warn you about Walker Talk, but we also oh, yeah. added this whole drop it like it's hot segment. I don't know if you had a chance to listen, but it's supposed to be kind of lightning round. First thing that comes to mind. Oh my gosh. <laughs> oh, man, so, I didn't put on face makeup, so if I blush, it's not fair. <laughs> I have omitted all questions about sex, so I think you're, <laughs> you're safe. Libido is important. Yeah, see, I love how just blunt she is about yes, like yeah. your period's important. I'm like, oh my gosh, but yeah. as women, we should stop being scared of talking about what's no. natural to us, and I think that's a great indicator of your health too. I never thought about it like that. Yes, it is important, no, everyone. Is that's important. why I talk about it all the time. <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> so, do you have a locker top, or are you dropping it like it's hot? Oh, what'll be more fun? <laughs> Did you have a juicy locker top? Oh man, I have some funny extension stories. Oh, give it up. Give it up. Okay. All right. So I, I actually have super curly hair, like ringlets. Um, and I'm letting it out more now that I'm done dancing, but it was not my look while I was on the team. So in order to protect my hair from getting really curly, I had to wear extensions. It was like kind of this layer between my hair and moisture from sweating. Oh, um, I already know. Go ahead. So there's, I mean, reality. Um, <laughs> But there was this every single year, at least once my hair had to come out while we were dancing because I just had little clip in extensions and my hair was a different color every year. So I have, you know, some really funny things, but my first year, my hair was red. So pulled out one of my extensions while we're doing what's called a hot timeout, just um, going nuts to the music out on the floor. Luckily I had red palms, so it's blending in. My hair is just flying as I'm cheering in my hand. Luckily I caught it. Oh my um, so that was year one. I have no idea what happened year two, but my third year, um, I happened to be like point of a pyramid and we did, a, you know, hair whip move and one of my extensions caught in, in my armpit, of course. Oh, I ripped shit. it out. The worst. Yep. And my hair is probably the same color it is now. So it kind of blended in with the court. But of course, as soon as I rip it out, we are moving formations and I'm all the way on the other side. And one of my teammates just yells, kitty on the floor. <laughs> and, <I like> that. <laughs> and so the whole rest of the dance, we were trying to figure out like who could grab it at the end. And that's what we're talking to each other about while we're dancing. It's like, oh. okay, you can grab Brittany's hair. <laughs> <laughs> the realities of, you know, I mean, this is all natural now, but it was definitely not before. Oh, oh my, my gosh, gosh, I love it. That's kind of the best. We haven't had anybody talk about that, and I'm I surprised. Know, because <laughs> there's been some moments. There, yes. There's definitely some extension nightmares. Yeah. Wig nightmare. <laughs> like, <laughs> that too, where like maybe props have been dropped, and it's like you are talking the whole dance. Like, who's going to pick that up? This is awkward. It's like laying right, right there, and 
That is so funny. Oh my gosh. I thought you were going to say somebody like slipped in the transition just because they didn't see it or something. Oh, but I yeah. love that you guys had. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, but it was, it was once a year except for my last year. So somehow I escaped without my final uh, expose. I love it. That, that was so my funny. fear. I can totally relate in terms of, the, <laughs> you know, the weather here, dancing outside. And, but I think I was so freaked out of wigs or anything that really wasn't like completely like locked Attached. down because just my luck the shit will be blowing in the wind like a tumble <laughs> <laughs> it kept me humble you know you yeah. have stuff flying everywhere it's like all right keep rolling keep going. <laughs> yep. the show must go on to the wind yeah. right did you wear a bump it when you were i was thinking about it because i didn't know how to tease my hair oh my so gosh like maybe if i just wear this bump it. I'm like obviously i realized that's not gonna work but <laughs> could you imagine if that just clanked across the dance floor, like <laughs> that plastic piece of hair bumping <laughs> anyways i have gone back and forth over whether to have a whole episode dedicated to hair hairography hair oh i think you should do it there is so much wrapped up in that hair <laughs> and we know do hair it. tights extra pom-poms i mean sucked up in there there's a <laughs> into it hair do's and don'ts just for sure it. that was a good one yeah, yeah it was Thank glad you. i could serve it up <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> i still want to ask questions but that's because i talk too much Anytime. <laughs> <laughs> Come on, let's do it. You want to do it? Okay. Okay. <laughs> She's like, oh boy. She's like, these Uh-oh. Here we go. You ready? It's easy. <laughs> I don't know, Brittany, you come up with some pretty creative questions. Yeah. <laughs> you asked me about the bucket of feet and water and I wet know. socks. Yeah, that was, that's yeah. not on the list, but <laughs> true. Okay. All right, you go first. Okay. What's your favorite style of dance? Ooh, I really started digging hip hop at the end. I love hip hop. Okay. Who's your favorite musical performer that dances? Oh, man. Bruno Mars. Ooh, I like that. Yeah. One day I will go to a Bruno Mars concert. It's the best. I went earlier, but yeah, he's, I want to go back. Mm. He was a little expensive the last time he was here. Oh. This was supposed to be rapid fire and here I am. Do, 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 do. Go ahead. Yeah. <laughs> Game of Thrones or Real Housewives? Ooh, neither. Okay. Ooh. I'm a proud non-Game of Throner. Okay. Okay. You yeah. Can- I was, and then I kind of caught on right like, literally at the end. But but I do love bad TV, like Pretty Little Liars, straight up my alley. I haven't seen that, but I'll have to watch it. Mm-hmm. Okay, this episode is called Doctor Doctor. Eighties or nineties dance music. Nineties. Introvert or extrovert? Ambivert. Both. I'm totally an introvert, but I've learned how to socialize. Oh, okay. Okay. Yeah. I like this one because it tells you it makes you a little naughty. What personality trait has gotten you in the most trouble? Ooh. Will probably involve drinking. Uh, <laughs> back in the day, I get I'm super sarcastic, so it's probably my sarcasm. But a good friend started calling me B Town Funky Fresh when I got to a certain level. <laughs> B Town Funky Fresh. Mm-hmm. We're gonna yeah. change the episode title for that. Yeah, <laughs> totally. <laughs> okay, just a couple more. Oh, what is your animal? Uh, my dog. It's not even about dogs. It's just my dog. She's amazing. Oh, what kind? So fun fact, I was in Peace Corps for a couple of years in Malawi and she was my dog there. So I brought her back, but she was a street mutt. So oh, yeah, I brought her home with me. She's awesome. Nice. Cool. Yeah. Oh, what was your last Halloween costume? Oh my gosh. Oh, I was Luna Lovegood from Harry Potter. Oh, awesome. I've always wanted to be blonde. So it was the perfect opportunity. <laughs> And you didn't have any extension issues. Right. right. No, that was full on wig and it stayed on. I was so impressed. <laughs> awesome. Well, thanks for playing along. Yeah. I know you a little bit better. Yeah. This is such a dope conversation and we are so yeah. grateful. <laughs> oh, no, it was awesome. Thank you for having me. And, you know, I just figure it, the more I can reach people um, with this kind of information, I just hope it helps our community. That's really what it is at the end of the day. I love our community and I just want to start seeing, you know, our teammates and our sisters just taking care of themselves a little bit more and not giving it all up for the sake of doing something for a few years. Makes a lot of sense. I yeah. think it's powerful because you just, you won't think about it until you're impacted later. And, right. you know, I just think it's such an important message. So thanks for letting us share it through our our little podcast here. There's definitely been a lot more listeners, I would say, and just people reaching out. Somebody asked about advice around auditions and keeping your body right. So this is just like the perfect episode for her that, yeah. can, that mm-hmm. she can listen to and start to 
because we don't know. I mean, I don't know. I didn't yeah. try to act like I knew, but she's a doctor. Yeah. yeah, no, but this is so exciting to be able to say like, hey, make sure you listen to this episode because there's some good jewels yeah. in there for you. So, and, and just as a heads up, I am putting together just like a little cheater program, just mm-hmm. a like four week informational program of, you know, half an hour to 45 minute snippets of let's focus on nutrition. Let's focus on how to be flexible and um, how to recover after an injury, like all that kind of basic information just to have it in people's hands. You know, as a doctor, like I can't necessarily be Insta famous. These people can't all be my patients um, because they have to be wherever I am or I have to see them once a year. But this enables me to kind of get that information out for a pretty affordable price Mm -hmm. so that people have access to it, at least from like the basic general treatment guideline level. Wow. Just as an FYI, I'll I'll put that together and um, so that'll be out there. Let us know so we can also promote that. I just love what you're doing. I'm happy to support it. So, you know, let me know what you need and how I can help. Cool. Thank you. So nice to meet you both. You're not too far away, so let me know if you're ever in town. We will. We We absolutely will. will. (laughs) Okay. Perfect. You too. Bye. Bye. Dr. Craig had the best locker talk story. We need a hairology episode for sure. Let's do it. I mean, there's so much that goes into hair. I've ripped out my own hair. Like, let's say it's a move where, I don't know, you bend over and, like, your foot, you step on your own hair and then you pop it back up. There's some ginger hair floating across the field. I mean, it's done. I'm Just bald. like the guys who patch. have uh, dreads that you would see. I should have collected those. I could have sold them. But we'd be like Marshall warming Lynch's up. Dre- yes. Two hundred dollars. But yeah, we would like warm up and find pieces of hair that were obviously from a guy. Yeah. Sit and spit. Because they were just hawking loogies on the field. Oh, God. That would always be the worst when we'd be exercising and you're, like, doing Why sit-ups on that. Yeah. Oh. Ew. But, yes, hair could definitely be a whole episode. Hairography, getting it caught in your armpit. Like, all that shit sucks. Right. And then the photographer snaps a photo of your hair whipping under your arms so it looks like you have hairy armpits. <laughs> We've had girls where their hair fell out at practice. Yeah, literally. It shit happens, man. <laughs> it always worried me of like this is why I have to have shit locked down because right. that is your worst nightmare. And you know bad extensions, some people didn't, you know, always level up, so to speak, on the, the quality <laughs> of the yeah. hair. Or, you know, we do need to talk about this, but just my hair is super long, and I, like, refuse to cut it, but it's kind of like, longer's not always better. If oh, true. If you have thinner hair, it just doesn't look right, you know? We're Let's, totally doing a yeah, hair episode. Yeah, now I'm Let's talking shit. But, but, you no. know, you don't want, like, spaghetti hair just hanging off. Yeah. Or just the makeovers that sometimes wouldn't oh boy. suit the... Ooh. Ooh. One girl had purple hair. I think they were trying to do a red like mine, <laughs> and they missed the mark, and it was like dark purple plum. Oh, my gosh. Remember that? And we were like, whoa, that's not NFL at all, because NBA is more free to have colors. Yeah. We're on a whole other tangent. Anyways. This is Dr. Doctor <laughs> yes, episode, but no, we will do a hair one, because I have a green hair story for you guys for Locker Talk. Exactly. For that one. But... Such a dope episode, so much information. I definitely felt it was exactly what some of our listeners probably need to hear. Totally. We're going to give all of her information below. Again, because she's a doctor in Oregon, there are restrictions around her giving advice if she's not your doctor and you're her patient. Mm -hmm. But I think she was welcome to people to ask questions. I think we should try to keep it updated as soon as that information is available so that people can have access to it. And then if you have any questions for us about this episode or things that we can maybe follow up on we can mention it in share chat but thank you guys for reaching out to us on social media i think it's definitely the place to conduct all chit chats like you said it's always what we wanted i just love that people are now coming to us and saying hey i'm auditioning for this team what do you recommend or how did you overcome this can you elaborate on that and it's just amazing and i i really feel honored to be a source of information at least just for what i went through yeah so just keep it up we're really enjoying it and for sure season yes. three is wrapping up so if you guys have any ideas or topics that we haven't covered and you'd like to hear or a part two of an episode shoot it out to us yes because we are planning into season four already so we would love input from you guys on what you want to hear about There's never a shortage of stuff to talk about, and there's definitely a lot that we'll have to keep our eyes on 
until next time. Keep your eyes on the sidelines. I'm going to leave that to you to say from okay. now on. <laughs>